previously on board. Be on the phone as well. Uh, as we uh, catch up with both of you guys there at the uh, at the Paralympics, Henry. Hi. Hi, Balls Radio. How's it going? <coughs> Are you right? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Say so how's it to Kevin? He's on the other line. Hi, Kev. How's it, Hendo? <laughs> I'm good. You, you guys are talking to each other. You live in the same village, but you're talking to each other via like thousands of miles on the phone here at Balls Radio here in South Africa. Nice to catch up with both of you guys uh, at the Paralympics at the moment. How's it been going so far? Uh, Kevin, let's kick off with you first of all. Yeah, well, obviously we got here well, close to 10 days ago and the atmosphere was amazing. I mean, we got in here. You see all the venues and everything on TV during the Olympics and then actually being at it yourself it just uh, hey, everything just like it's, you know it's real and then obviously yesterday I started off my campaign with the 200 RM uh. where I wasn't expecting to do too well in type of thing and I ended up coming fourth there and just missing out on a medal by a split so it's always it's a crap feeling to come fourth it's almost like having to kiss your sister type of thing what is but, that yeah, like I'm Kevin? happy with our things <laughs> what is that and, like people yeah, just, people use that saying all the time what is that like it's just you close and then it's so far away so like personally I'd rather come 6th or 7th or something like that than when you <laughs> yes. come 4th yeah. yeah. it's just because so, you, know, you know what could I have done more type of thing but yeah I did everything I could do and it's the best time so I'm very happy with how things went yesterday yeah I, look I mean you say it's like kissing your sister but it's, it's got to be lucky in an event you don't expect to do well in where you like just sneak in, uh, you come in fourth, you you just yeah you miss out on a medal, but uh, you got to get out the pool going. Gee, well I feel good about uh, a, a race that I really wasn't expecting to do well in. It's got to bode well for uh, for other events for you, surely. Yeah, well my main event is the hundred meter breaststroke, which only mm. falls on the last day of competition on the eighth of September. So my coach and I we already sat down, and it was almost impossible to be able to peak for nine days. So my whole training schedule and everything like that is all geared towards the 8th of September. So I mean, yesterday in that 200 IM, I managed to pull that off still with in training mode type of thing, not in racing yeah. fit. And I'm not like, I'm not ready to race. So like you just said, obviously when I finish that and to come so close and know that it wasn't an event I was supposed to do well in, it just makes me even more confident for that 100 meter breaststroke next Saturday. So mm, yeah. Very happy. Very, very happy. Oh, a big gap between your events, though. Hey, that's uh, that's kind of got to be a difficult one to prepare for. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was only going to come here doing the 100 meter breaststroke, but I think having to sit for nine days and not doing anything during competition, and then having to get in, it would have driven me mad. I mean, I would have been sitting in the stands watching the guys like Henry and Ahmed Asim and Shaw Bo and Natalie swimming. And I think I would have gone mad sitting there not being able to compete so I mean all these other events that I'm doing now it's just to keep me busy keep mm. my mind going and just to prepare me even more for that 100 breaststroke at the end Does, I mean is there such a thing and I don't know I've never been a swimmer but is there such a thing as also getting familiar with the pool itself they say that the pool all pools are different some of them are quicker than others so doing these events does that, that does that familiarize you with the uh, with the pool as well yeah I mean geez it's a <laughs> It's only once every four years that you get to be in a venue like this. I mean, this Britain is putting on a show for the rest of the swimming world with this facility. And I mean, it's a big difference from going to a championships in South Africa where there's maybe at the most a thousand people in the stands where last night I walked out and it's just thousands of people. I mean, those stands were packed. Mm -hmm. There was not a seat open. And that's just that atmosphere alone can get a, a, a person who's not mentally ready will be shaken if they had to walk out in front of thousands of people like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's always good to have a few races before your main event. And I think it's just, it's just going to, you know, when I do walk out for that 100 breast, that's going to be a normal for me. It's not going to be that, oh, crap, there's so many people watching me, that whole <laughs> feeling. So, yeah, I mean, people, you need to get used to the pool and the surroundings and the atmosphere. And every pool is different, and this pool is fast. The guys are doing good time. So, yeah, Team South Africa is going to have quite a few medals, I believe. Yeah, and uh, one under the uh, belt already with Natalie. Uh, what, what, what's, what was the vibe after? I mean, she, she's a, a Paralympic legend, and uh, she goes and nails another gold medal. So she's almost like godmother to the team now. She's been there in that, in that Paralympic team so long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, geez, when Natalie gets, or to us, getting a medal is everything. And I mean, to her, it's almost like she's doing it in sleep. 
But no, I'm kidding. It's yeah, you know, it's something special. Every you can see it in her that every single medal means something to her. It's not something she takes lightly, and it inspires all of us, and she inspires all of us. I mean, she inspires the whole world basically. Like in 2008, um, qualifying for the yeah. Paralympics. Yeah, it just shows what a human being they. Natalie and uh, Emily Gray. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I can just broke up yeah, there sorry, a yeah. second. Um, sorry, Johnny. Yeah. Natalie and Emily Gray through to the final of the 100 meter S9 uh, backstroke final uh, to be held a little bit later. Another medal there, uh, another gold possibly. Yeah, well, Natalie, she's looking very good all the last week or so, in all, with all of us training together and everything. Everything has been looking very good. So definitely a medal chance there tonight in the 100 meter backstroke. Then we've got Emily Gray in the finals as well, who just went a personal best time this morning. And her making a finals is a great achievement already. So, yeah, she's going to be in the finals. She's going to have that adrenaline going. Maybe she can go a, lot, oh, a little faster than what she went this morning. And it's a final, so everyone gives their all. They're going to be doing South Africa proud. And, yeah, I'll, I'll see another medal coming in on the back track. Awesome stuff. Well, uh, Kevin, yeah, I mean, enjoy the experience. And uh, we wish you all the best. And obviously, you are targeting that uh what do you say 100 breaststroke okay, in on the 8th of september so um, there's still a way to go there's uh well, just over a week before your event and uh, we appreciate your time chatting to us this afternoon here on balls uh, please uh, tell Henry. sorry we don't know what happened with that line it just disappeared but uh, tell henry as well um uh, send him our apologies that our phone line kind of dropped him there but <laughs> it's been great to chat to you and send our best to everyone there thank you very much man cheers kevin cheers bye 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 <laughs> kevin paul from the uh, swimming pool Joining us on Balls with the Radio. Two PM to six PM Mondays to Fridays live on balls.co.za. Balls.co.za.